dry brushing and the 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 wet into wet together. Yeah, I see a style happening there. Thank you. I just followed the steps. Yeah, yeah, but everybody does it in their own way, you know. And, yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed is you have these very light, light, light shadows. You, you do on almost, you do it very often. It's not just in this painting; you do it in a lot of paintings. Um, that's indicative of watercolor too. And people, I, I think the people that love watercolor really love that aspect too. Mm -hmm. Transparency. I, I tend to go more. I tend to go more for the dark value of it, but I, I love these light, light values. Really nice. <sighs> Thank you. It still works as a shadow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think uh, I learned from this piece is the right side uh, shadow. It, it started with uh, the cold, a uh, cool uh, color, then you add the yellow. That surprised me. Uh, so yeah. on the light side, so you would do the warm, right? And then the cool, maybe. Yeah, in general, yeah. yeah. The, these yellows, whatever, I was thinking that. They were reflected lights. Light, lights probably hitting the rock face down below and then reflecting back up into the shadows here mm -hmm. and in here too. Yeah, I did the dark on the right side first uh, with the gray, basically uh, neutral tint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, that works for me. <laughs> Thank you. Just try the different approach. Yeah. touch the nice thing about this painting too is if you want it to get a little darker uh -huh. in the shadow here you certainly could uh -huh. and let's see what happens here and get a little bit more um i mean you I'm could just, yeah. but at the same time it, it's working the way it is and i i wouldn't want to tell you either way to go on that because it works it works just fine thank you uh, yeah, I tried oh, to way, do yeah, it lighter. Uh, this time, yeah, I, I per, uh, purposely tried to uh, use high keys. Yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, that, that's good to know. Because you're definitely very successful at it, yeah. Thank you. Now, uh, I, I would call this high key. But now, if you were really trying to do a high key painting, they would have probably lighter. Uh -huh, darks, yeah. Lighter darks. Yeah. And, it, and it, it'll look really faded. So. Um, I can add some uh, gouache in, in the dark. Oh, I, I, I like this theme. What I call this is, um, I call this theme the pocket theme, uh -huh. where you have lots of extremely pale paintings, and then they come in with the extremely dark, dark, dark. just hit those, those blacks really dark. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I don't mind this at all. Okay. It's totally up to you. Thank you. Um, so I would call this a, a high key painting with some darks in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially look how you're saving them for your focal point too. So that's a great place to put them. Oh yeah, I also try to put the dark and the uh, the dark the darkest dark and the lightest light there in the focal point. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And this, by the way, this edge. This edge is perfect. Look at this edge. The way he took the background right into this edge. Negative painting. Yeah. yeah, really, really gave you a great craggy edge in there. And um, and then look at the background. That is all it needs to be. Look how simple that background is. Very light, very high key. Not a lot of information, but enough. Plenty of information. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I, I followed the job. wet into wet approach at the beginning, the, the blurry background. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those houses oh, are scratched that. in with my nail, uh, fingernails. That, did you scratch that? Yeah, the houses, the little bits of uh, white. Oh, uh, these? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. I wouldn't have known. Um, yeah, great. You're great with rocks. And you, that's a clinic with rocks right there. That's a just a 
great way to handle rocks. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. It's a little bit, uh, you know, the X cut. X cut. Oh. Yeah. Surface texture with X cut. X cut. I'm sorry. X cut. Right. X cut. Oh, a X. Yeah. X cut. Yeah. That's the, the like, a, like a, the cutting. Like you chop into it. Chop, huh? chopping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll have to take a look at that. All right. I mean, I don't know. Nice, nice looking piece. Thank here. you. Gosh. Okay. Thanks for your right. comment. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. See you next week. Next uh, class. Yeah, next week is the first day of the next uh, the, of the next class, you guys. I'll, I'll get you that information. Um, not that you really need it, but I'll get you the um, I'll get everybody the links. If, uh, I some... just didn't know who was taking the class again, so I didn't want to send the links out to everybody, but it doesn't really matter in here. You know what the link is. Um, okay, Barbara. What do you think, Barbara? It looks better up on the screen than it does in real life. <laughs> I'm liking it. Yeah, I, I'm kind of liking it now, too. I wasn't at first. And yeah. <laughs> well, you'll see the same thing will happen too. Uh, this goes for everybody. The same thing will happen too when you go away for a while and then you look at it, but but look at it from far away. Maybe put it in a put it up on a wall or something and just walk away from it, forget about it for a while. And then when you come back and look at it, you'll be you'll be shocked. It usually looks <laughs> um, things will stand out to you, things will but you know oftentimes you, you don't we're so lost in the details, we, we forget about the, the big things. Like for instance, your background is receding. You're getting lots of recession in your background. Um, this feels like it's in front of that, and that, and this, and this. Yeah, Move, keeps moving back. That's not easy to get. And you, you saved your most saturated areas in the foreground. That's good. I, I could even see you even going more saturated. Okay. Um, with some oranges, reds, yellows. Okay. I mean, I'm just throwing them up there. I, I, I don't mean for you to put them in that saturated, but just some saturation. This mm -hmm. area right here, this area you did right here. Yes is totally awesome. I oh, love that area. You really nailed it. The way you caught that little piece of light right there, that is really, I mean, I think you stepped up your game there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. It happens in little bits and little bits and paintings. And, you know, then over a long period of time, you, you know, you put together all those little bits and it's a whole big of a whole big bit. <laughs> this uh this water is very successful in here. Oh uh, yeah, th this area, this is a painting right here. <laughs> right there. You'll find that too, everybody. Um you'll find that uh when you had when you do paintings you'll like, you, you if you like a painting. Cut it down into, into different sections. You'll see there's a painting back there. There's a painting right here. You know, you'll see paintings within paintings. It's very satisfying. I hope you're satisfied with this painting. I, I'm, I'm pretty darn satisfied with this painting. Thank um, you, yeah. <laughs> this, this blue right here is a little, and this one right here, are these dark shadows? They're moving down the hill or? Mm-hmm. You're separating the rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. I, I think I would lighten up the top of it. Okay. Just just the top side of the shadow, maybe up to there, maybe up to there. And then keep it dark in the shadow itself, in the deep part. Oh, okay. Yeah, I agree with it's you. Crag yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. How, what's the best way to lighten it? A little gouache or? Uh, I think what I would do first is wet it first and stamp it and you might have to rough it up with a little stiff brush like I did. I use that bristle brush. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would do that. That'll probably be enough. But if you need to do more, maybe a little white. Okay. And then again, I would probably try a little bit of white. If you want to work into some of these craggy edges, if you're wanting to, um, you could do a little little work in there, maybe a little just separating this from the water a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, those are areas to hit white. And then when I usually, when I hit those whites, I'll usually wait for it to totally dry and then glaze back into it later. Oh, okay. Yeah, gla glaze right over. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, gosh, I'm not seeing much. Um, well, maybe this is your kind of painting, huh? Yeah. Natural, natural <laughs> surfaces, yeah. I don't know, I'm loving this. Well, any questions? Thank you. Now, what about the seaweed in the middle? Do you think I have to darken that or is it okay like it is? That one? Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, what I might do is take a little bit of that right behind, take it right into the rock, right? Right into the rock like that. Okay. A little dark, but but a little more like that. And and because right now it feels like it's just kind of stopping right here at this peak. And it probably wouldn't do that. It'd probably go right right just just it's that overlapping principle. Oh yes. Oh I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it'll it'll um it, but you're asking about the color of it or something or what? Yeah, does it stand out too much, or do you think it's uh, the color's okay? Well, I mean, it, if you look at the real thing, it does stand out quite a bit. So it, yeah, I kind of like it myself, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, I I like it. I, I would leave it. I, I certainly okay. don't have any problem with the color of it. Yeah. Okay. Good. It gets like okay. that. Okay. righty. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. I'm Wow. We've got Daniel. Wow. <laughs> that is some saturated color, my friend. <clears throat> Woo. You're not messing yeah. around. It, did you break out that cobalt? Um I not the cobalt. It's 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 uh it's a uh I, I read this in Brenda's article in the uh, watercolor artist. Uh, it's a uh, you know, phyllo turquoise. Oh, phyllo turquoise. Wow. Yeah. Is that yeah? Was that for the this green out here? Uh, pardon me. No, the water. All the water. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 well, not all the water, but out here. Yeah. yeah. You got a little bit greener in here. Yeah, a little bit of yellow to it. Yeah. Nice saturated color. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it doesn't it's just just about the te technique. It's not a painting of my mind. I'm kind of disappointed in what I did. Well, it's got a lot of nice things going for it. One one thing about it is if you start off the background. Uh, pretty saturated. Then, then you have to get really saturated up in here to get that same recession. So, if you want, you could take some. Um, you could take a glaze, you know, over the background to neutralize some of these colors. This is just a thought because, I, again, when I have paintings that I'm not 100% happy with, um, I'll use them for experimenting on. I mean, I, why not? You might even use a little white in that too, this color. And then now, of course that's too much, but that'll add, that dulled all the color back there. So now we have your color in here looks much, much richer. So instead of pumping these up a little bit more, I would actually gray those out a little bit more in the background. <laughs> Let's see what else. Um, yeah, 
you know, we, we have that thing we were talking about here, right? It's kind of going uphill. So what, yep. what I would do here is just give me some, whoops, let me get this one here. Give me some little, like a corner to it. Like, I could, let, me, let me use a smaller one here. Like it goes like in, it goes downhill and then across. And then it goes downhill and across. But it really, as it faces you, it gets really flat. Yeah. And then you want to give these, these, these sides to it right in here. As if they're little boxes almost. Um, let's see, where's my... And really give it a side to it. So it has a front and a side. It's just a little glazing. And the blue will work nicely, but... Some of that, let's see. I could see these shadows being a little darker too. So we have the really the, the side going into shadow and the light going into light quite dramatically. Maybe even on the top of this too, really. We, we can um, like kind of zigzag that a little bit. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So again, we have that straight line thing going there again, kind of that kind of an arrow. So if you want to break that up, just you could use a little white. It'll do it. Or you can take this background color and cut it into this. Either way, um, you know. So you get the uh, the really difference between the top and the side. You know, quite a quite a difference. It's just a little bit of value, a little bit of edge in here. No big deal might be worth experimenting on. I mean, you know, you have a lot of beautiful things happening here. You, you, I mean, I really love these colors. This, this handling of this area is just, that's my kind of color and my kind of painting right there. I love that stuff. Nice yeah. and loose and easy. Um, All right, any, any questions? Any other questions? So on the bottom of the uh, rocks, you're, you're saying it comes down and across, down and across. Yeah, they're like little boxes almost. Yeah. Look, look for them though. Where, where they meet the water, pay careful attention to how they meet the water. I have to look again at the picture, but... Uh, They have a quite quite a shadow side and quite a light side. Make sure you get that that difference. And then what I did is I, I painted them brown. Remember how they got brown on the bottom? Mm -hmm. They get kind of wet. Yeah. So I paint them kind of brown across the bottoms, and then I had myself quite a dark little shadow in the shade. This is too dark, but. And I, I can't get the right color, but um, huh. quite dark. I'll try to glaze it in. <laughs> it's, it's hard to work with this thing like like that. So really, really get it quite quite dark in the shadow. You wouldn't believe it. It really turns things. It's worth playing around with. Okay, we'll do it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, George. Let's see. All right. Is George there? I'm. I'm this yeah, is not, this well, is the other George, I think. Or maybe I can't hear him. All right, that's fine. 
Um, no problem. Let's see. What I might do on this is let me get my. I would use like a blue and a white on some of this background area. Huge at that bigger. So this way back here. And that's not the right color, is it? Just so that vanishes in the background a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then I think up here in the foreground, let's see. I can hear somebody cooking up something in the microwave. <laughs> you can't cook. And I'm hungry, darn it. No, um, I can see strengthening up some of these shadows a little bit harder like this. And maybe some of these within the shadow, these almost feel like light in the shadow here. And that, that's really common in a watercolor. Just group those back. You know, group them and move them back in value. I'm just darkening up in value a little bit more. Here too. Maybe, maybe more like that. Looking for a little more contrast in there. And this right here, you want really, really dark. All the, see when you bring the contrast and the hard edges up into the foreground, that gives you more depth in the piece. So all I did is put pop some darks in the foreground and push some lights in the background. And then of course some saturation, right? So getting that yellowy orange right up in here, really, really smacking that up in there. Okay. And some yellows and oranges are up in here too, I can see maybe greens too. Um, and I just leave this area alone. And we'll get some nice, nice saturation of color up here in the foreground. And as it goes in the background, just let it, uh, let it be grayer. Now on the bottom too, try to make that as, try to make that flatter. Where, because you know where where ocean meets land, it's pretty flat because you know the water will level out. So I would uh, take some of these and kind of let's see, that's a big one here. Let me make that a little bit. Maybe take your water down to there. Mm -hmm. Something like that, level it out like that. You could do it with white, you could scrub that out, make that into a rock face if you like. I know they're not easy to keep these level, though I know, I know it isn't. Kind of like that. All right. Now, if you'll notice, look at, look at the bottom of this is now lining up with the top of this, I just noticed. How about that? That's not usually a good thing because you get this idea of you almost have two paintings, one, one painting of the background, one painting of the foreground. So the way to solve that would be to maybe take, take a little white and take a little bit of this up and over the background. Maybe up, up, up and over that way too, a little bit more and break, break that area up a little bit. So you, so you have the foreground overlapping, you know, the background. That's what we're looking for. Really more overlap. And while you have that white out, 
I see you did really give yourself a nice light face here and a shadow side there. Nice. So the same here. Oh, good. A little light in there. Next Thursday? Yeah, next Thursday. Just joking. That should be good. What time? Early? All right. That sounds like Daryl. Okay. okay. All right. That's fine. I'll be here. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to George. This is George. Well, the only way for me to mute him out is to get out of here. Let me do this. Two five three three Netflix Hill. There we go. Okay. Um, There we go, George. You there? Did I mute everybody? Yeah, yes, I'm here. All right. There you are. I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, These are really cool. <clears throat> oh, thanks. I, I don't know if Hector recognizes anything in it. <laughs> no, wait, you, you've got your. I do. It's all one dog. No. Okay. I do. The pink dog is Hector's dog, Duncan. The orange dog is my dog, Jenny. And the blue dog is a friend's dog, Banjo. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, I, I saw on YouTube some girl has a white, like a white chihuahua or something like a white Pomeranian or something like that. Or she bleached it out white, and then, and then they, they dyed the hair pink, just like that. <laughs> I mean, crazy. Hector's dog is pure white. Oh, well, we could probably do that to your dog, Hector. <laughs> Hector, I you see. could do that to her. Yes, you could. Uh, All right. I, I tried to put two scenes from today from Los Lobos. Yeah. But they look more like designs. Right. I mean, I can feel the cragginess. And the water and the, the land. Yeah. So is this the one up here, the one where you're looking into the caves? Uh, yeah. And down into the water, I see a cave here and a cave here. Is that what I'm looking at? Or, yeah. Yeah. And then oh, this one right here too. Flowers in the front. Right, the flowers in the front. Yeah. Uh, what what what? What's going on with these shapes in here? Is it just shapes? They're just shapes to add interest. I hope. Yeah, and then the the one of What's that? that is a, a shadows on a sidewalk from a, a friend who sent me a photograph from either leaves in a tree or a plant or I don't Gosh. know, I sort of like the design. So I just yeah. put it in there. Cool. And I love these, what are, these, these little Golgi bodies or whatever they are on the outside here. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just sort of activity. Yeah. <clears throat> Mitochondria. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe I remember that word. It just yeah, popped in my head. I don't think I've said that in 30 <laughs> years. And thinking of becoming a surgeon. Now, what inspired you to... Well, I had a friend who was really into it and it really got me into it. Uh, I, I, I was really into my Grey's Anatomy book and he was too. And then I found out I was a little more into the Grey's Anatomy than I was into splitting people open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what is, what is a red thing in the center? Oh, well, that's Jerry. That's what? a design. I'm sorry? A design. Oh, design. Very nice. Love it. I love how you're um, running with it. Thank you. All right. God, you're, you're doing a whole series here. I mean, if you do enough of these, we should put together a show. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay. I mean, that would be that would be a neat show. All right. With, thanks. with your background right. and the one you're having behind you and looking at that, both of them, they work together as a set. You know, you put together 20 or 30 of these. You've got um, a whole 
direction, you know? Yes. Okay. Think about it. All right. Thanks. I love Michelle's comment last week. This goes into a book, a book yeah. on dog oh. adventure. It's great. All right. So I, we That's need someone to write the book. Maybe the, oh, maybe the book doesn't have any writing in it. I don't know. Uh, we'll add a storyline. Yeah. You know, children's books are very simple ideas, George. I'm pretty sure we could come up with something. Yeah. Yeah, no, George. and I could see you selling the book at the show, too. You have a home. I don't know. I think it's a great idea. All right. Thank you. Say, George walks the dog. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right. And Monica. See, isn't it funny how the paintings fall into the two categories? They're, they're usually either more saturated or they're more gray. So this one fills it, or I call it muted. This falls into the muted category. You know, I love this reflection you got off the rock right here in the foreground. You really caught that. Oh, whoops. I didn't screen share that, did I? Or did I? Did I? No, I don't see it. Oh, I don't know how we came off that. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> this is a nice one. Let's Thank see. you. And you included quite a bit more foreground. That was a good idea. Yeah, but you see this. You really caught this reflection here. I'd be very happy with that area. Thanks. You should be. <laughs> um, you know what might help this too? If you take this dark right here, yeah. take a little bit of that. I mean, maybe not as dark as I did it, but uh, see how you took this dark down into the water? Yeah. Maybe just a little bit, I don't know. Um, and that's only if if you want to do anything to it because it's really working the way it is so please don't if you don't want to uh that that's really great um nice muted color painting lots of you know one of my favorite things is all the different colors of gray you have green grays you've got red grays yellow grays blue grays and then you did smack some saturation in your blue here and there. Did you come back and do that later? Yeah, several times actually. Did you do it with gouache or did, how'd you do it? Uh, just with watercolor, different oh. kinds of blues. Wow. Yeah, it'll get dark on you. The more, the more, the more glazes you put on it, the darker it'll get. Yeah. But the, you know, it can get the, the, the water, sea water can get very dark. Um, See. I still need help with the rocks. I, I, okay. They're not, I, I, I kind of like what you did with the rock right here. This is, I, I, I like that. Thanks. They'll do that sometimes. Now, what happens? I, I mean, this is gross, but um, what, you know, the birds, they, I, there's a, there's a nice word to, to say poop, bird poop, but <laughs> they poop all over the rocks. And they yeah. and they get white. They're they're quite beautiful. Uh, I think it's called guano. Yeah, yeah, guano. There you go. So uh, <laughs> it's a nice nice way of saying it. But yeah, what you did here, it looks pretty darn good right up in here. This whole area, all this. I think your rocks are working pretty darn nice there. Um, you know, think about some faces. Yeah, the way it was coming up. You know. And those, those will, and you got the reflections down the water really nice. So those are working just fine with me. Um, they, so they need some faces. And then all be really give a lot of attention to the contour. Remember, the contour gives the character. So, so um, really kind of. You know, come back and draw, draw back into the contour. 
up and down and up and up and down and over and up. So. Okay. Um, and then I usually glaze them down, of course. I wouldn't want them too bright, but they do get pretty bright. This one's working pretty successful. Now, for those of you that were, you know, where it gets a little too much into a line and it was going like this, if you look at the way she kind of darted a, a couple of little contours out like that, see, it seems to work pretty nice. If anything, I could see maybe another one kind of You know, occasionally they'll they just kind of move back and forth. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, what was the problem here? I'm with the rocks. I mean, I don't have much of a problem with your rocks. Um, okay. You know, this kind of thing, too, where you're just getting some neat looking texture on there can be just fine. But yeah, the ins and outs, um, they are kind of falling in falling into a line there and hmm. so what you do is that's not a big deal i mean just just step a couple of them back into shadow there like this one steps back really nicely uh, maybe a couple more where they just kind of you know kind of step back and you get a little bit of a shadow so you get this side coming out and then the side moving forward and then you get the white the white face right here so that's amazing with just that little tool you're using it's so much better and it's really hard to draw this because i'm having to draw with the mouse if i had oh. a uh, if i had a tablet I, I do have a dumb tablet it's not very good but anyway so anyway th those uh those can be really nice little things with with some reflection on the ground oh reflections on on there can be fun too what about the rocky coast in the background i like this rock you put out here Thank now you. we yeah. um i might take a little bit more you know cut cut that foam down a little bit because they, they run in these long little streaks. And unless there's a whole lot of wave action, you'll get these long little streaks hitting, hitting the little reefs. Uh, this back here, I, I could see possibly hitting some whiter faces on there again. Just if you want to use a little white, you can come back there. Okay. With it just a little white and hit some little, little, little faces make sure you give it plenty of shadow and then occasionally you'll get a face of it grabbing a little bit of light and it just works its way back all the way back maybe flatten out the bottom a little bit more try to get that nice and flat here all quite flat And that's what'll make it feel more like shore. It's hard to draw a flat, totally straight line. I know it's not easy. I was trying to make it jagged on purpose. <laughs> you are? Yeah, but uh, to they do that. I mean, just I'm just talking about. I mean, now I've made them so flat it's ridiculous. Okay, so maybe not that flat, but but uh, if you if they start curving curving up like this. You know, yeah. then it'll, it'll it get a little tweaked on you. So okay. you need, what you can do is just take a little white and flatten that out. Take a little white, flatten that out. They're, they're pretty easy to do actually. Yeah. See, you you might even get really carried away with them. <laughs> I do. <laughs> just trying to make a cove. Oh, cove. like it goes into a cove. Okay. Yeah, but, ah, like that. Okay. And it might, you might get a, um, a white face on this because then, and then you'll get the, the, Ooh, yeah. and there might even be a beach in there or something. Wow. Well, anyway, 
Uh, your mountains look great. Is this a little house right here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, I would suggest putting a little smoke out the chimney. No. There we go. <laughs> That's where I live, right? This Thomas Kincaid, this thing out here. Come on. No. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's about it, I think. Great. Thank you so much. Great class. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Michelle. Oh, you really got a lot of overlapping going on here, Michelle. Yeah, you know, I, um, Look at that. I have a question. If I wasn't going to, if I wasn't, because I use gouache to pull those things up there in the front. If I, I would have never even know you use gouache. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I would have not known you use gouache. But I like how this feels like it's in front of that. And that feels like it's in front of this. And this feels like it's in front of that. And so on. And so on. And so on. Yeah, it really, that's very successful, yeah. See how, see how she didn't make these as saturated as these or, or these, but they're still more saturated than anything back there. It's not easy to do, but it, it's sure is uh, rewarding, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I actually had to go back in because my red there in the middle was kind of dull. So, and it's still a little dull, but I went back in with gouache and then painted over it to try to saturate it more like yours. And I still, I can't get that bright, bright color that you have either. Well, you know, I'm looking at my monitor and what I'm looking at here, my, my painting is not as saturated as the monitor. So it's, it's oversaturating a little bit. Oh, yeah. okay. Mine is, sure. Um, wow, your background mountains almost look exactly like mine. <laughs> if I were to put any of these, uh, any of your little white buildings in there. So because they look exactly like mine, they're perfect. No, I'm just joking. No. Uh, nice water. Uh, do you have any questions? I, well, I, do, I, you know, we've, we've talked about straightening out that shoreline, and so I was straightening, flattening that a bit because mine's kind of curvy there too, just like everybody else's. I don't know why we like to do that, where my shoreline, like we all like to curve that and make it like a cove. You know, there must be something in there that we like that. That was my only question: is like, should that be flatter? Now, if you wanted to go in and out, you see how I stepped them back to one. Yeah. Two, three. They will do that, but they. But as you put them down, they just they fall into flat lines like that. Gotcha, gotcha. That's that. So, you can you can change the shoreline, but it has to be stepped back rather than yeah. back. Yeah. Maybe but yeah. So they, they they run into pretty run into pretty flat areas back there. Um. But now, what do you think of this idea? Taking a little bit of, let's see, come on, a little bit of this color and really overlapping it over some of this, possibly right. here and there. Yeah, so more color there. It actually is a little more saturated, but yeah, I can add a little more, more uh, bright color there. But that, you know, if I wasn't using gouache to pull that, because I, yeah. You can't go over that once you've got that dark down there. You kind of. Yeah. If I wasn't you can always using take gouache. gouache over. Yeah, yeah, if I wasn't using gouache, well, how would I make that overlap? Would I just cut that in with the dark color? Oh, no. I would I would take the gouache over it. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that, that's what I would do. Now, well, what's happening here is that because the side here is going like this, and you're going, it's going like this, and then you're oh, going yeah. like this. They're not quite overlapping enough. So I'm thinking gotcha. if, if you were to take something, you know, something over that, like you're already doing it, you know, you know what to do, you're doing it. It's just a little bit more. More, yeah, yeah, you're right, yep. That's all I'm thinking, okay. just a little bit more. And is my far mountain too light? Should it be, it's almost like that front mountain is in shadow and that back mountain is in light, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's your call, because you certainly could have a, a, like a fog bank back there, but, um, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't make it as, 
I would make it blue or gray than that. Okay. Um, or maybe even in the lavender side. I don't know. I'd say no. That's interesting. Blue. I don't, know, I don't have the right color. It's gonna be too dark. But I'll try black. All right. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> maybe just a little bit of sky color in there. Maybe just take a little bit of the sky color and include it over there if, if you like. Yeah, okay. Working for me. All right. And I just as just as a closing note here, one quick thing. Um, if if you if you don't mind using gouache, okay. take a little. See what I'm doing here. Take a little blue into this dark, this black. If it's too black, you now I can't see. Your color might be already there. It, it is. I did go in and pop color into my dark, so it's hard to see on the monitor. Yeah. Okay. Um, and maybe I can do a little more livening that up, but there is bright blue, turquoisey stuff in those darks. Yeah. But yeah. I can see yeah. a little of that in there. Maybe. Okay. All right. That's thanks, it. Rob. Thank you. Uh, let me clear the drawing. Oops, somebody's on their phone again. I got to stop share here and mute. And then I got to come back and I was Michelle Alice. Hey, hey. Wow. Gotta love that blue. It's not this one, sorry. It's I oh. have another one that says latest painting. I like the blue one. Uh, what'd you do? <laughs> oh, I just tweaked it. I wasn't very happy for some, I don't know why. I'm just, it, uh, I really struggled. <laughs> Well, let's see. Um, well, I really love this color right here. You know, your your saturation up in the foreground, your um, your vegetation too up here in the foreground looks great. Thank you. Yeah, I had trouble with the rocks for sure. That was my biggest challenge. I just just yeah. go into it a little bit more, a little more. Um, uh, kind of jaggedy and darker with this shadow that goes into the cove there. Yeah. Just think jaggedy, jaggedy, raggedy. I would dry brush them in there. Okay. Yeah. Maybe now, here's the weird thing about reflections that I haven't really talked about it in, in this class too much. Yeah. Maybe we ought to do some paintings with more reflections in them. Um, but, um, the darks in a reflection will actually be lighter. And the lights, like this light right here, yeah, will actually be darker in the reflection. Isn't that weird? I mean, it, it's, oh, it's weird. okay. So if I were to put a light in here, I mean, it wouldn't be that light. It would be darker than that. Right. Um, maybe, yeah, like that. And then, and then the shadow would be like, yeah, like that. So isn't that weird? I mean, like, so if I were to put the shadow, like this shadow in there, I might like something like that. And then, yeah. so, but it's just weird. Um, that's a little bright. So anyway, um, yeah, so lights are darker and darks are lighter. What happens is that the water, the color of the water influences it. And it, it, it's a, think of it like a colored mirror. So you have this greenish colored mirror that's making your lights a little bit greener and, um, and darker. And then the darks a little bit greener and lighter. <laughs> lighter, okay. I know it's confusing, but it's true. Now uh, these darks in the background here, I would probably lighten up with probably yeah. using some white. Yeah. Just a little bit of white in there, I think. To help that. 
Uh, your foreground here is really great. I don't have any problem with that. I couldn't get the water to look, you know, vibrant for some reason. I just, and you're right. I think the more I add layers or glaze, the darker it gets. It does. You know, it's. Yeah. That's the watercolor thing. But, I mean, it's 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 not a bad painting. You know, I mean, my, you know, I can see you coming on with some stronger shadows like this. Like this shadow, you, this is a really strong shadow you have over here. I might, I think the color and value of this one in here is almost the same. So I, I would definitely try some of that. Okay. And then, yeah, you got that orange in there. So I, that little reflected light. So I, I could see throwing in a little bit of that if you like. Um, other than that, it's looking really good. Well, thank you. Yeah, these two, these two dark, so I think I might, I might work with those light. Yeah. A little bit. Um, is, is that it? Any questions? No, I think, are the mountains okay? I'm, um... Yeah. I mean, if anything, a little lighter. Okay. If anything, a little bit lighter. So, you know, as you put this white down in here, you got this contour right here, this little dark too. I yeah. Just, because you know, if you add the water to the white, which is what I'm talking about, add some. So you're doing like a white glaze over the whole thing. Yeah. Just include that over everything. Well, that's too light, but. No, like a light glaze. And yeah, see. a light glaze, and then step it up a little, a little, a little bit lighter on top of this, and and very light on top of these darks. This dark right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And we got uh, Claire. We did. Oh, okay. And then we got uh, Ethel. There's Ethel. There I am. There you are. Nice. Thank you. Your melon's really received. Look at that. Yeah, I had more problem with the foreground, but hey, it's coming. You don't have any problem with the background. No. No problem. Um, let's see. So you see what you're doing with your shadows right in here? That's exactly what I was talking about. You see how you have a you have a a, a side to this and a front. And a side and a front, and a side and a front. Yeah. I can see hitting these shadows right here. Uh -huh. um, a little more like you did on this one right here. Uh -huh. Maybe hit, maybe hit those a little bit darker. And you know, I would play with some little bits of saturation in your color here and there. Maybe hit some greens once in a while. Uh, you yeah, got plenty of yellow. Yeah, there's a little green underneath, but not enough, I don't think. It was a little light. Here and there. I think the green might wake things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the problem you're having with the rocks? I, I think your rocks look pretty dang good right here. Well, those, uh, I'm, uh, the one at the bottom right, that, that looks like a barrel. <laughs> yeah, I'd lose that all into a shadow. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe a little bit deeper. I threw a little orange into mine. I don't know if you need to really, but I, I threw a little reflected light into there. Your water, by the way, right here, that is gorgeous. Yeah, I like that part. That's some gorgeous that was just water. Orange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd be proud of that water. Um, you see, now here's what happens. See, your shadow on a green mirror, which is the water, your shadow got lighter and greener. And your light here, which looks like you can, that's mostly, I think that's the, um, that's that reflection we got in there. So if you wanted to, you could even take a little bit of, uh, let's see, a little bit of that into the water, a little bit of that into the water. Mm. That orangey face, oh, yeah, very no. little. Uh -huh. 
and, but your water is working already. So, and that's only a, a suggestion. Uh, um, it's working fine in the way it is, believe me, it looks great. Um, let's see. Um, I love how you brought some of your strokes horizontally mm -hmm. and then some of these vertically. That really works. It feels like sediment, you know, so that, that works for me. You've got a huge cave here in the foreground. Yeah, that kind of didn't quite go back the way I wanted it to. <laughs> oh, that, that might help. Yeah, maybe a little bit of that in there. Yeah. A little reflected light. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. A little dark on the shadow. Maybe the shadow got a little dark. Yeah. That's about it. Cool. Um, oh, that's much better. As far as this one here on this, um, yeah. what you can do is think edges. I want you to think of your contours. What's mm -hmm. happening on your contours? And and play with that. Now, really, uh, let's see. Really come back and really, uh, how, that's usually the problem. It's, you know, when yeah. my edges, when my rocks look kind of frumpy, you know, I get these like, uh, like they say the classic uh, potato shaped rock. It's yeah. usually the edges that are the problem. And okay. I need to get in there and crag them up a little bit. So that's my suggestion for you is uh, maybe get in here and really kind of. Mess them up, yeah. Yeah, mess them up a little more, yeah. Okay. All right, and I really like how your shoreline back here meets the hill, and your hill right here overlaps it clearly. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up nice and clearly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Shelly. Well, your sky really shimmers. That dry brushing. Now, what, what are you doing here? You doing oils? That's a good move. She stepped out. Um, let's see here. No, no, she she's there. She's trying to unmute herself. I was trying oh. to unmute myself. Sorry about that. It's a oil on watercolor paper. Yeah. Does that taste good? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Celery is a loud item. I'm sorry. Isn't that funny? Is that a Dorito or is that a tostado or what? Celery. You're making me hungry. <laughs> so look, look how look how they step back, everybody. See how she has, she steps it back and cuts back, steps back, steps back, etc. So but then that, I usually hit a really white edge, you know, so I can see maybe hitting a little bit something. Mm -hmm. right there. I'll never forget. There's a mural painting I did a long time ago where the guy that ran the studio showed me that trick. He goes, you got to blast them. They're really light. And he came back and he dry brushed this white over my, um, my, my edge is pure white like this. And it, gosh, it, I thought that was way too much, but it worked. Nice. So yeah. I would hit that on there. Getting that in there. Some nice little rock faces. Yeah. Now this, now your shadows are almost as light as your lights up here. So what I might do is um, maybe, I mean, this could be, I mean, I've seen shadows on an overcast day maybe uh, more like this because mm -hmm. because you don't have these really stark lights and shadows you're it's feeling a little overcast and there's nothing wrong with that but well, if there you want clouds in the sky yeah <laughs> so and, and, but if you want a little bit more of this this look over like you have over here I, I might take a little bit more of that up on the top face here yeah, and it'll make these feel like they're more a little more like in shadow. I love the grass yeah. you have on here. This, this is beautiful grass. Look at that. This is what I'm talking about when I when I say red, yellow, and blue within a color field. See, she's got the red and the yellow version, and then the blue or green right up in here. Um, you're doing that there. Look, see, she's got this red here. There's the red. There's a bluer version of that red. 
and so on. I mean, it gives spice and variety. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, you really cranked up the yellow on this color. Wow. Well, well, I used a different picture than uh, they oh, yeah. used fish. That's, that's right. Oh, I saw another it. one that was very happy looking to me. So that's right. You're using that picture. Oh, okay. I, I forgot. Okay. Now I know what you're doing. Okay. Um, oh, wow. This water is so deep and lush. Wow, that's beautiful. So then, Mark, can you can you enlarge it a little bit so we can see it a little closer? It's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, nice. And if you like. Yeah, I should have done more shadow uh, reflection. Those seem to work in, in a lot of other people's paintings, and I, I need to add the reflection down in there. You know, I, I might just um, add. Oh, yeah. yeah. Blue is the right color, but how about green? Um, yeah. A few of those might. Yeah, you know, because it's in the shadow, you might even get a couple of these light things doing some things in there too. Who knows? Yeah. Nice. Let's see. But I wouldn't go any lighter than that when I put those in there. I keep them, keep them. It's really easy to get those reflections really bright. Right. I tell you, reflections are, you know, they're very satisfying when you do them because they're not easy to do, you know? They're not easy. They can be though, but um, Anyway, they're real satisfying to do when you. And I love uh, water does this too. It gets real shimmery sometimes when you get a cloud reflection on there or something. Now, if anything, I would say uh, maybe some of these darks back here could be a little bit lighter. A uh -huh. little bit lighter. Let's see if I can. I, that's too light, but. I don't have the right colors, but um, yeah, I could just see yeah, those. Too much way. contrast back there. Yeah, for that far away. I don't have the right colors, but you know, I just lighten those up a little bit. Uh huh. And, and save your darks for up here, because even even this value range is still much darker than anything in the background, and 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 lighter than anything up here. So. That's all you're looking for. You know. All right. Okay, thank you okay. very much, Rob. Thank you. I've enjoyed the class so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Let's go. Woo! That's what I call an active painting. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a mess of gouache. You, you got gouache going on in there? Is that, is that blue gouache you're using? Everything is gouache. Oh. You know, you, you're getting a lot of transparency, though. So really? it just goes to show you, you can do that in a gouache painting. Um, it's wonderful. I love all the, and you, it totally goes with your other paintings, which your style is always found in your paintings. Thank you. Now, yeah, um, if you like, if you wanted to group all this into shadow, this is the way I would do it. I would just take a, like a shadow glaze and group it all. Maybe even, I don't know if I can get it dark enough, but whatever. Yeah, just so you can have the light side and the shadow side. If that's what you want, if you like the way it is, keep it. Oh, okay. It's got a style to it the way it is. So, but that's what I would do if I were grouping I'm not, that channel. I'm not sure what I wanted to do, but <clears throat> so if it's a, uh, it, if it's shade, um, would you use like a kind of grayish blue? Yeah, that'll work great. Yeah, sure. 
I love all your opaque colors up into your water. These are great. Oh, they're so fun. And uh, if, like we, we were like we were talking about before, if you wanted to, uh -huh. you could take uh, a little bit of these, you know, a little little reflection into the water if you like. Yeah, I told I totally forgot about <laughs> reflection there. Yeah, here and there, no big deal. A little bit. Okay, so the background. Um, Lighter. Yeah, like like what you're doing up here on the top. Yes, I I realized that. Um, Just a little bit. Yes. A little bit there, and then not. I would do them over here. Gosh. See, you've got style. You got it. You see what I mean? You see, you see how everybody? Do you see how? Um. Every week, Mitsuko paints and, and, and she can't help it. Her style just comes right out. <laughs> I mean, that's great. I mean, it's so great to have that. The rest is just, you know, once you have a style, the rest is just, what, what do you want to say? What do you want to do with it? What do you want to, what do you want to paint? And, and, um, and then you just run with it. You have a very concrete style. You sh you know you should know that. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm trying to find the style. I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> well, it's working. Keep keep trying. And you know the 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 essence in me in my opinion the essence of style is editing out the stuff you don't like and keeping the stuff you do like. Mm. So if there's anything in this painting you don't like, take it out. I see. Just take it out. One of the best things you can do mm. is get a little window. Let's see, let's do it in red here. I'll do it in red. You take a little window like that big. Uh huh. And then, can I can do it? Yeah. And then you move it over here. Do you do you like what? Do you like that? Oh, I see. Do like this, and uh -huh. you can cut it out of just cut it out of a white piece of paper. Uh -huh. Just take an exacto knife and cut yourself a little window out there, and just walk around and go. Do you like this? Ah, uh, that's in, that's oh, that's interesting. I would do it. Yeah. Yes. Any part that you don't like, just take it out. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? How you'll concentrate on the area? Yes. Yeah. So any any area anything you don't like, just take it out. It's a uh, easy to say and not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> I like all your line work. I mean, it just looks so calligraphic and and yes, whimsical. That line, line is almost uh, disregarding disregarding all the every, everything. I just. I just do when <laughs> when the brush goes yeah. by the calligraphy. Yeah. Um, you know, even though you probably heard me say that there, there aren't any lines in nature, the fact is is that these lines, they, they kind of direct our eye around. You know, they, they say, okay, I want you to look around here. I want you to look over here. They take us all around, and uh, so it's interesting how you're incorporating lines, and it's almost like they're they're there to take us on a little journey, you know, take us around here. It's like a it's like a journey. Looking at your paintings, a lot of fun. I mean, that's what I want out of a painting. I want a painting that I can look at and um, explore, like go on an adventure, you know? So any other questions? Um, uh, how oh. about, uh, I think it's, I did too much of the sky. Of the sky? Uh, <laughs> get, get crazy. I, I... Well, 
you can always simplify that by just taking a brush over a lot of that and just 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 a wet brush and go over it a few times it'll mm -hmm. bring it together okay yeah i didn't i don't have much of a problem with your uh you with your okay yeah this just feels like uh you know more of your whimsical lines they're they're going everywhere <laughs> but instead of dark lines they're light lines yeah okay okay thank you so much sure thank you all right, and we've got. Okay, I'm going to Victor. end the class now. Another adventure. Thanks for following me. <laughs> Until next time. All right, Hector. Oh, we got there? Hector. Rob, can you make it bigger? Uh, yeah. I, I don't. I it might come off the page here though. All right. Who's uh? Can you turn off the music? Let's see. There we go. Thank you. Otherwise, I gotta jump out of here and mute you. Um. Again, using line to bring us all around. You know. Now, here's the thing. When you talk about style. You know, all the rules go out the window when you talk about style. And you, it's, it, that's, when you talk about style, now you're talking about, um, it's up to the artist how many rules they want to hold on to and how many rules they want to break. So I want you to think, you know, I know a lot of times I, I talk about a lot of academic issues on here because that's mainly what people need to think about. But you know, I probably don't talk enough about uh, stylistic issues. And um, I'd like to talk about that more. So, especially if we get a lot of the same people, I don't think we're gonna get anyone new. So I wanna definitely push stylistic issues. So here's one stylistic issue, he, you know, it's Hector. So he's got about 20 going on in here. <laughs> Um, see how he's using line to delineate, you know, I, I was using uh, the color, the color variation and, um, an atmosphere to move us back in space, but no, his values and colors back here are, are almost as, as dark and as saturated as some of his up here. So what, what Hector chooses to use is line to move the eye around and that's just fine. Um, he's got his little, little hatch marks. Uh, that's common to use things like that. These little hatch marks here too, just, just little flicks of color. Probably referring to, uh, structures. And, and it, now instead of my, you know, the way I told you how to do everything correctly, right? I told you make these all correct on the bottom. Well, he chooses to smash them up against the rocks, right? smash them up against the rocks. Look at these. A lot of, it gives him a lot of action in his painting. So who's to say what's right? You know, you can, you can choose to do academic rules and get those right. Or you can choose like Hector to just go by his gut feeling and paint what the emotion he's trying to convey. And conveying emotions with paint is, uh, I mean, that's just as hard as painting rules. It is not easy. All right. I might think about possibly uh, some reflective areas. You could even take these right down into the, oh, here, let's, let me use this other one here. You know, some of those down into the water, I feel like just for a little reflective thing. Um, Hector, you're not there, right? Are yes, you? I am. Oh, you are, okay. I couldn't, I didn't yeah. know whether you were there or not. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I was thinking that yeah. uh, all my paintings are kind of to be looked at squinty-eyed. Yeah. 
you know. And then you and I don't know. And as I'm painting, I don't know if I'm real, if I'm doing that as I'm watching because I am trying to look at at values and uh, and shadows and that's what I go after. So and then, so when I I'm done and I look at it and I look at it from afar, it's it gives me that squinty eyed look that I yeah. Uh, because I have always wondered how do people paint with within arm length and then decide what is further. I know it's all aerial perspective, yeah. but when you're painting, how do you, and, and I know, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, putting things in front of each other. Also, you get to, yeah. Atmosphere and distance yeah. and perspective. Overlap and creates depth. Overlapping. Yeah. There we go. That's it. Exactly. Overlapping. But, <clears throat> but there is, uh, I don't know how would I. Yeah. I, and when I look at it, then I, it, to me, it looks better squinty eyes, squinted eye, or squinting yeah. your eyes when I look at it. It does look good when you're squinting your eyes at this. I find that uh, on your paintings quite quite a bit. Yeah, that's uh, like that that's too. basically how I. That's what I'm thinking. I, no, I, I like I high it. contrast. I like high contrast. Yeah. And the variation in colors. Warm and cool. Warm and cool. Well, you said it. I learned I learned about warm and cool from Mark Strickland. Oh and yeah. That always stayed with me. So I'm always trying to vary warm and cool next to each other. And it just makes little things pop more. Right. Well, you know, the way you're taking this edge right up here, this yeah. one in front of this back here, it, it's successful. Um, it, it, it actually moves it forward. Um, and and I know you, you put the line in there for reinforcement, probably because this area right here wasn't delineating enough from this area right here. But but I would say that this, this area right here is definitely moving away from that. So you're getting recession, you're getting overlapping right there. So I, I think that works totally. Um, and if that happens, it's, 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 a, it's a chance I'm taking. I'm constantly yeah. taking chances to see if it works. And then I move to another area, but that's hey, what hey. I'm. By the I way, you see, did you get these little marks in the, did you get those by yes, power I, I No, I did them with the credit card. You did them with a credit card? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. I, 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 I was oversaturating the water and I knew yeah. I had this lighter blue underneath. So I wanted that to show through more. Yeah. Uh, I, I was able to go back to the white paper and the blue was stained already, the lighter blue. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see one of these paintings when you when you lay one on the ground and kick it with your foot and get it like your <laughs> footprint in there. And I'm going to be asking you, how'd you get that? You go, well, I stepped on it. Um, yeah. I, and if it worked, it worked. Yeah. So you see right now at the bottom of this, uh, this rock right here where it meets the water. Yeah. You see how, um, how stark that is. I might throw down a little bit of something, a little, not a shadow. That looks like a shadow, but like a little reflection in there. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, I was struggling down there. Yeah. A little bit of something. That I was struggling with. It'll kind of, uh, you know, and, and then when I, I struggle, I try to fix it, and then whatever the last thing I'm doing, then I'm okay with it, and I go on. Yeah. It's something that I could probably go back and do something, but then I just go on. I don't have the time. Again, it's yeah. time, too. But, you know, your, your painting has all kinds of paintings within it. Look at this. There's one. I mean, there's a painting. 
There's a piece of abstraction right there. They're all a little, look at that. I'd like to hang that painting right there on my wall, right there. <laughs> Just think you could, you could cut this up into a whole bunch of paintings and make like 20 grand off it. You piece it out. <laughs> this is $2,000. This is 2000 right here. Now, I, I love this area right here too. This is driving me nuts right here. I don't know what it is. This foreground right here. I love this. I, these are my favorite colors. Love these colors. Every time I see them out in nature, I stop and, and look at it for a while. Um, I, I like the right uh, bottom. Yeah, With yeah. Here, here, down, down there, down. Yeah. Like the crystals going up. <laughs> oh, I love this area too. Down, huh? down, down there. Down here? And, yeah. You know, when I'm uh, Those. on Those. my palette, yeah, this. I like to go back with Chinese white. Yeah. And I have all these tones in my palette. Instead, of, I, I enjoy seeing my palette with all these different colors and tones. And I'll use some of those with uh, a very uh, light wash of Chinese white, and I'll put them in, and I get these other tones so it's not as opaque. Yeah. Like but you almost get a, uh, you get another lightning, uh, a lighter color, but yet, yeah, I think they're interesting. I've been looking back at a lot of my older paintings and that I was doing back yeah. then. And I, I look at them and I go, I love that. Yeah. You know, I, you know, how warm, I always think of it like this war, light and dark complement each other. Uh, right. Warm and cool complement each other. Right. So why can't transparent and like translucent right. or transparent and Joe Peak complement each other? I, I well, play with them all freely. I suggest everybody well, do that. The greatest at that technique is John yeah. Singer Sargent. I know he does it all over the place. I don't know why yeah, people. And are... I just love looking at his uh, watercolor and trying to find where he's used that. And it's all over. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Okay, Looks sorry. It's like action painting right here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the class, too. Thanks. My pleasure. <laughs>